Welcome to Kevin's Cave. Again. Oh my god. Whoa. Oh, it's pitch black. Ah, that's it. We can see the hands of the tunnel. We're locked in the tunnel. Well, there's no bats. Dinosaurs behind me, look. Help, Rex. You all right, Rex? Well, we can see daylight that way. Oh, this is a spooky tunnel. Good morning, everyone. And welcome back to Johnny Stars ZXR Part Two. Cool, yeah, I can't believe I let that pop out. How stupid can you get? Uh, well, I guess it. Be easier to take the pipe off, won't it? And then we can uh, get access to it a bit easier. Just gonna stick it back on there for that. So I can undo the bolt. I'll do. Uh, Where's my spanner gone? Under the uh, banjo bolt, which I believe is a 12mm. Yes, it is. A very, 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 very tight 12mm. Okay, now. So, I've just got to put a bit of a extension bar on it. There we go. Uh, are we going to lose the uh, brass washer? Looks like it's in there pretty tight. Don't, don't look like that wants to come out. So now we've got to undo these Allen bolts. So I think I'll uh, move over to my uh, homemade workbench. The reason I've got to take this apart, or to crack it apart, because I've tried to push the piston back in, but I just can't get my fingers in there to push it, so I'll just crack it open and I'll be able to clean in there a lot better as well. So, let me switch you off and set my homemade bench up. So, here's my own made bench, which I steal, steeled, which I stole from my uh, Honda CRV. It's a picnic table for the Honda CRV. When I scrapped it, I thought, no, nope, I'll keep that. OK, 
okay so we just have to crack open these four allen bolts get the right allen key first probably that one which is I think an 8mm see how tight these are Absolutely solid. <laughs> oh, my God. That's free. Better not break that bleed nipple out of It's four. These aren't the proper calipers for the ZXRH one because it's been converted to uptight upside down forks. So these are Tokiko calipers, six pots. And I believe they are off the ZX7R 750. Not 100% on that, but that's what I was told when I bought the bike. Well, when I bought the boxes of bits of the bike. This bike was actually in boxes when I bought it. The green paint had been done on the mud guard and the uh, petrol tank in the seat but the belly pan I had to make I think I got that from a slingshot Suzuki slingshot okay, well, look at that bit manky up and uh, the wheels are totally a different green but you don't really notice on camera painted those myself uh, made the seat uh, what's it seat what's it called subframe the original subframe was aluminium and you can't weld aluminium because I ain't got the proper stuff so I bought a subframe from I think it was a 125 KTM chopped it up and welded it back together into the shape I wanted that's the reason the guy actually sold the bike because he couldn't uh, find anybody to weld his aluminium frame to the shape of this seat so there we are two rubber seals in here try not to lose those the seal does look okay See if we can get the piston back in now. Wherever it is. Piston, where are you? My piston has pissed off. Come on, I've just had you in my hand. This is just crazy. Ah, there it is. Put it safely on the shelf. Very expensive mic, mono mic, hope it's working well. I just stood on the cable and trying to destroy it already. Hope my uh, video audio is a lot better than it used to be with this new microphone. I've had it on a couple of videos, I think. No, I think I've had it on one at the end. So this will be the first full video with this microphone, I think. Better put some uh, fluid on that, hadn't I, to try and help it slide in. Yeah. 
Okay. Let's see if we can push it in. in a suction that's my theory Let's see if I'm right no it's not right because it's not got the fucking nipple on it you idiot there's the nipple on this one so why won't it slot back in it's all nicely seated And it should go in nice and easy. Yeah, that's it. Nice and easy, does it? Every time. So, uh, give these a good clean up. So, I'll just put this away. Get some uh, soapy water. Give those a clean. <clears throat> okay. So all we need is a toothbrush. Try not to get it in the uh, inside the uh, what's it? Just putting my thumb over the seal. So I don't get any water in it. Uh, same on the other side. Dry it out with some uh, tissue. Uh, may as well give the outside a clean one, that's it. Okay, so I'll just do the same to the other side. And I'll get back to you. Okay, so now let's give the uh, very manky bolts a good clean. With the wire brush. One down, three to go. But I must say, if you are doing something like this, make sure you've got your drill on reverse so the wheel's spinning that way. Because if the wheel's spinning that way and you're doing that and it slips out of your hand, it's just going to shoot straight into your face. So have it going that way and then it's just going to shoot off down there somewhere rather than up here. But, uh, probably already know that. There might be some young ones out there that uh Hello. two down, two to go. And you're probably better off wearing some gloves as well. Three down, one to go. Well, I'll have to put some sort of grease on them here, I think. I would probably uh, clean the threads out as well. Uh, the threads aren't on this one. The threads are on. this one but uh, they look all right and the main reason I'm not going to clean the threads out is because I haven't got a tap and die set that fits it but they should be all right bit of grease on the bolts 
not too st much stupid grease all over the brakes. So anyway, let's get them back together. Trevor. So let's put them back together. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. If I stand here. Yep, I think you can see. Uh, make sure the seals haven't came out. Came out. Make sure the seals haven't come out. Uh, put your over off and line it up. Just going to dip my bolts in a bit of grease. Not too much. on because as we all know grease and brakes yeah, not really recommended is it but whether this is going to melt or not is our temperature grease but I suppose it could melt with the uh, up brakes and run into the brake pads Make sure they're all nicely lined up before you go and put some welly into tightening them up. You shouldn't think they need to be that tight. out this time without letting them come all the way out and uh, wasting all your time what you've already been pumping the bloody fluid for it. Okay so after a load of brake leading, brake leading, brake leading, we finally started to get the uh, piston to pump forward so now we could take the brake pad out. And make sure we give the, all the uh, brake pistons a good clean. See if I can pump it out a bit further. Yep, I think that'll do. Don't want to go any further than that. All I'm doing is soaping water and just washing the pistons with it. Is that one all done? So to dry it off with a clean rag, wherever my clean rag is, I dry it off with a clean rag. And we should be able to push it back in. Uh, push it in part of the way. Should be able to push it in all the way, but it's sticking it by thumbs a bit. Just put a bit of rag on it and push it in all the way. Then we're going to have to try and trap it with something and try and get the other pistons to come out one by one. So I've just found an old handlebar weight just to trap in between that piston because I know that piston's been done. And then if we pump the caliper again, one of the other pistons should come out. Then we could clean that one as well. Okay, so one of the pistons has come out on the other side of the bike. 
So now we can take the pad out and clean that one. So again, we'll just use the soapy water. Yes, it's got salt in it, but uh, not enough to give you blood pressure. We'll give it a good clean, then push that one back in, and so on and so on. So when I've done all 12, <laughs> when I've done all 12 pistons, I'll get back to you. Yeah, look at that lot. Just using uh, cable ties on the ones that I've done. Uh, I seem to be uh, working out as a good system. So you know, I've got those, done those five. Just got to pump that one out and clean that one. And then I can go on to the other side. Okay, so that's all the brakes back on. They're only loosely finger tightened up, but both sides are all done, all bleeded up. All bleed it up. Uh, you do press the brake though, but the wheel is still binding slightly. But that is because we haven't finished yet. Because now, like I say, all these bobbins make the disc float instead of the caliper because the caliper is a fixed caliper not a floating caliper and the discs are floating discs but they're not floating because all these have dried up and corroded inside or whatever so now we've got to try and clean these out so that's what I'm going to do now clean them out okay so what I do is get some uh, just get a nut and bolt out of your new nut and bolt selection. It's about this size. And what I do is drop the nut on the floor so you can't find it. Come here, you a, just find a part that you can remember. There's a nice scratch there. You can see that, so I'll remember that. Push the bolt through. Put the nut on the other side. You get a spanner on either side, whichever size the spanner is. Let's see. Look about bloody 17, there you do. Is that 17? Yep, 17 mil. Let's stick a 17 mil on that side. Isn't it? Tighten it up, and then when you twist the bolt, the actual bobbin will start spinning. So let's see if we can get you in so you can actually see that. Probably a bit dark, but you might be able to see it spinning. If you look at this part here. You should see it spinning. Hopefully we're in focus. Let's get the right spanner on it. You see it turning. So we'll just keep turning that till it gets really free. Should be really free. Really, really free. So it's quite free now. Oops. 
and just take your bolt out and go on to the next one and just carry on like that until they're all loose and then your disc will start floating again and your wheel should become see there it's really stiff bit in that part and that's because the disc is actually out of line because these have dried up and yeah, that's that one and just carry on going through a ball so when I've done them all I'll come back to you and we'll spin the wheel again see it's seized up there stiff nice and loose stiff again so let's see if we can uh, get this wheel, wheel really fit free by just working on all these with an unfold. Okay here look so now we're on the last one let's just do the last one and uh, see if we've freed the wheel up completely side was really tight and this one is really tight <laughs> really really tight see if it spins around still sticks a bit there but that's probably Is it in somewhat? So let's get that out then. And see how free it is. Perfect. a lot better so there you go okay then so that's the brake parts done uh, so that's the end of part two part three will be the carburetors not sure how much filming I'm gonna do there but you know so yes that's about as far as we can go with the brakes so I hope you enjoyed it uh, please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe uh, if you're a new comer to the channel and you enjoyed the video please subscribe you know it doesn't cost anything uh, and uh, as always I'll see you next week I'll see you in another life, brother.